Hi, today we're going to talk about the SPICE simulator in KaiKate 6.0. As an example, we're going to simulate a circuit from an open source project, FlexiTier. FlexiTier is a transepithelial electrical resistance meter, which is basically a resistance meter which is measuring um, the resistance of the layer of cells. The schematic of this project is created with easy EDA uh, that's the choice of the author of the repository but today we're going to look at this particular part of the schematic which is fixed current AC generator there is a little explainer picture down in here because it's not really readable when it I see symbol is drawn like that but um, this is a very interesting circuit so we're going to reference this picture and try and build it in KaiKet Spy Simulator. We're going to start with an empty KaiKet 6.0 window and create a new project. I already have one created, but I'll just create another one in this folder. Let it be demo. With new project, uh, the schematic and the PCB file are automatically created. We need only the schematic file. Double click on that and it opens a schematic editor. KaiCat has one schematic editor for your typical schematic design as well as for the SPICE simulation. So on this schematic we need to press Add Component or press A on the keyboard. This will load up the components menu, the library. In the standard library there is a SPICE directory with pspice components and spice components but it's not necessarily to use one of these because you can assign the spice model to any component of your choice it's just more convenient to have for example vdc um, symbol readily available it's readable and you can place it on the schematic like that but you might as well put any component of your choice for example, this, and make it a voltage source. It's just make the schematic to be less readable. So we go back to the spice, and we will also need a sinusoidal voltage source. So I'll select that. It's also just to make the schematic more readable. It's not necessary to use this particular part because you can open the part itself, double click, left mouse button, and you can press SPICE model. Here you can see the voltage source SPICE parameters and you can select sinusoidal and set any SPICE parameters you wish to to this particular symbol and it will be a sinusoidal voltage source. In our case that's a DC voltage source and I'm gonna go with 1.65 volts. To continue, I will make a reference window like this and we'll try to copy this circuit component by component. As you can see, we have um, 1.65 reference voltage and then 3 volts control voltage. In reality, it's not really 3 volts, it's a DAC, a digital to analog converter from the microcontroller. Uh, which is 0 to 3.3 volts and I will simulate the whole dynamic range of the DAC by the sinusoidal, sinusoidal source. I'm gonna set it to be to have amplitude 165 which is one half of the 3.3 volts and DC offset of 165. This way we will have sinusoidal voltage from 0 to 3.3 volts and frequency 1 kilohertz is fine for me. Okay, so then we need to add a ground reference. Ground reference is component called 0. I don't know whether you can use the standard ground, maybe you need to assign something to the standard ground symbol to use it as a pspice 0 reference, but I will use this ready available 0 component and I'll connect it to the sources. Okay, then we need two resistors. Any resistor from the KaiKet library will already have 
um, spice representation. So we can just press R, which is standard resistor, and put it on the schematic. I'll press R for rotation. So I can rotate it and put one resistor. Again, press component, uh, select resistor, OK, and press another one. Each resistor for each voltage source, as in here. It have to be 20 kilo ohms. So um, double click, uh, value 20k. And it automatically will be available on the SPICE model as well. We can also double click on that and put 20k instead of R. It will also do the job. Then we need an operational amplifier. That's a little bit more difficult. I can go to SPICE <coughs> library and find um, an op amp in here. But this op amp doesn't have a SPICE model. So for now, I'll just put it in here. But we need to go ahead and find a SPICE model for an operational amplifier that we are going to use. Uh, in this design, author selected AD8066A op amp. So we can just try to go online and search for AD8066 um, SPICE model. That's the analog devices part. OK. And you can see uh, GitHub is this model, but it's always better to check the manufacturer page. And if you go here, uh, Tools and Simulations, you can see uh, LT Spice model is available at LT Spice. LT Spice is also awesome free of charge software to use in a SPICE simulation. We're just not covering it in this particular video, but it is embedded. It is not provided by a um, manufacturer. So what we need to do is to be a little bit more tricky. Uh, on the forum here, Engineer Zone, we have a question with someone asking about this SPICE model behavior. And here we can have the whole model listing. Um, I checked the same model listing is hosted by someone's GitHub, but it's not generally recommended to trust GitHub's models. They might be wrong. Always better to go and grab them from the manufacturer website. So for our use case, we need to go to the project folder. In the project folder, demo, we need to create a new text file, um, text document, uh, whatever name, we can name it as the component. And we need to copy all of the model listing. This is all the SPICE model. Copy that and insert it inside of the text file. File, save. And we need as well rename it to the dot lib. So now we have a library component, like a library file for a spice component. And now we can reference this. If I press spice model for an op amp, it automatically automatically selected that it is an op amp, but there is no sub circuit listing, so it's not working. We need to select a file. Uh, grab a proper library from a project folder. And now we can select that this amplifier is AD8066 and it's indeed uh, gonna simulate it right. But there is one more <clears throat> thing to be aware of is this node sequence. You see in a SPICE model, they have um, pin numbers 1, 2, 99, 50, and 30. And that's not right. Uh, in our op amp, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, like that. And we need to alternate this node sequence. Um, it will not work our way otherwise. 
So I'll press this alternate node sequence. And uh, as we can see, first node is non-inverting input, which is plus. That's one. Okay. Uh, next one is inverting input, which is two. So far, so good. Uh, next, we have positive supply, which is four instead of 99. So I'll press four. Then negative supply is five. Okay. And the last is the output number three. Now we have our model assigned properly to this op amp symbol. We can continue working with the rest of the schematic. Um, when I'm controlling the symbol like that, I can press X and it will mirror the symbol across the X axis. Uh, pressing Y will mirror the object across the Y axis. So for me, this is the right way to place it. I um, also need to provide a power. So then I'll create a two power sources. As you can see, you, don't, you cannot see it in here. You should look here. We have minus five and five volt supply. So this circuit will generate uh, the square wave from minus five to plus five volts or whatever we wish it to generate with controlled current. Okay, so um, we need plus five and minus five voltage sources. Now we can simulate our circuit, but before that, we need to annotate this schematic. Assign different reference designators to each component. Now we can go to Inspect Simulator. Here the simulation button is not active. We need to go to the setting and set the transient simulation. For example, one step to be one microsecond and final time to be one millisecond. Okay, now we're ready to simulate. Well, we have uh, an error. Well, I figured out what was wrong with the simulation. When we added the model, there was no full path to the library. Like we selected the file from the project folder and you can see there is no path included. So what you can do is you can either copy the path and paste it, or what I did, I just selected the file outside of the project folder. So this way, uh, the KiCad will include the full path to the model. So I can do it this way, it's faster. Okay, okay. Now we can go to the simulator again set up the transient her, uh, analysis for one millisecond press ok and run simulation now the simulation is executed and we can place the schematic on one side of the screen and the graph on the other part of the screen now let's check our reference voltage it's 1.65 volts as expected our DAC 
has a sine wave from 0 to 3.3, which is right. Okay, what do we have on the output? The output voltage is extremely saturated, I would say, and it is rail to rail. Well, if we look carefully, you can see that inverting input of the op amp have to be connected here. So we need to fix it by inserting the op amp in a right orientation like that. And now go to the simulation, save the circuit, start the simulation again. Now you can see it's much better. Um, the output voltage of the circuit is kind of a sine wave from minus 4.5 to 4.5. And the current, which is purple trace, is from minus 100 microamps to 105 microamps. Now that we have the current control AC generation circuit working, imagine I wish to create a 50 microamps square wave. So for that purpose, I need a voltage source, which is PVM pulse. Okay, I'll put it instead of a sine wave. Now we need to set up our PVM voltage source. Um, we need we need it to be from 50%, like 25% to 75%, right? So it, if I'm not mistaken, it have to be from 0 0.825 to 2.475. Let's try it out. Uh, 475, right? And we'll make it slower, like let it be 100 microseconds and 50 microseconds. Okay, and let's try and simulate that. Um, you see, I wish to prop current, so when I'm selecting the net, it's probing voltage, and when I'm selecting the port, you see the cursor is turning to a loop. This is the probing current. And as you can see, we have something around plus minus 60 microamps as expected. So the input voltages, um, if we remove the current for a minute, you see the input voltage is oscillating around the reference and the output current is oscillating from negative to positive. I'm not going to go into details how this circuit is working. Honestly speaking, I don't know how it's working on my own yet, so I'll try to figure it out later. Uh, for now, I'll do, I'd like to show you one more useful feature of this simulator. You see the tune instrument. We can tune <coughs> the output resistor um, to check whether this current generator is stable or not. For example, um, I'll remove this old one and click again. We have 40k, okay? We can check what current is going to go through the circuit if we put the load resistance to 20k. You see um, the current, we are looking at the current now. The current is not changing. I'm changing the load resistance and the current is changing only slightly and it's still plus minus 63 microamps. So this is the useful feature. Uh, sometimes you need to tune whatever value you have in a feedback to check that some value is better than the other. So you can change the resistors on the resistor value on the fly and it's definitely nice to have feature. With this I'm going to end up this video. Thank you for watching. Uh, leave your comments. I will try to answer your questions if there is any. Use the free software. Well, and have a nice day. Goodbye.